Welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. We are here with Bruce Blossom, and today we're going to we're going to explore how he's redefining patient and student education worldwide. And Bruce, I want to welcome you to the show. Hey, thank you for having me. I'm happy to Absolutely. be here. Absolutely. Yeah, oh, we're we're happy to have you here. <laughs> We've had a good discussion so far. I wanted to see if, if just at the outset of this, if you wouldn't mind just giving us a little glimpse into your personal life. Sure. I'm uh, 56. I have okay. uh, two sons that are 13 and 18, and um, I enjoy golfing and some leisure sports, uh, sailing and, and things of that nature. Uh, I try to uh, try to, to protect what's left of my body. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and all of the joints and, uh, and the ligaments, I seem to have a pretty good idea of how they all work. And uh, so I got to keep them all moving in the right direction. Right, right. So what do you, what do, you do to, to stay active and, and healthy? I mean, the first question I had before we even got on this was, you must be an athlete, please. So, yeah, so mean, unpack what you do. Yeah, I basically just am like a couch potato like any other person. Except every time there's a commercial, I roll off the couch and maybe do some push-ups, or I'll do, <laughs> and then you know, oh my and then I watch uh, what I eat. I try to you know uh, try not to eat anything that's too processed. Uh, sure. I try to stay mainly like with protein and things of that yep. nature. And uh, again, when you teach health education. And you teach about what is diabetes and uh, what is, you know, atherosclerosis and heart disease and, and things of that nature. You're always cognizant of your food. You know, you're, sure. you you know that you should be healthy. Like it's it's very difficult to go talk to a cardiologist who's 300 pounds and he's smoking, telling you, yeah. you know, you need to change. Uh, yeah. You know, so it sort of lends a little bit of credibility, uh, and you you can't really ignore all of the knowledge that you've earned or learned uh, over the last 26 years. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you, you look fantastic. I, I, I hope I <laughs> can look you. as good as you at 56. <laughs> yeah. So I want to, before we get into more of your current career, I want to take a step back, quite a few steps back to when you were about seven, eight years old. Do you know, you know, looking back what, you uh, you know, what did you want to be when you grew up, when you were seven or eight? What, what did you tell people? I was always planning on being an architect. I was the best kid, you know, the best artist in elementary school. I was the best artist in junior high. I was the best artist when I was in high school. Okay. And when I went to Penn State, I was on my way to being an architect. And I was oh, okay. in a cow pasture and uh, we were painting watercolor landscapes. And a guy that was with me, I said, what are you going to be? Why are you taking watercolor? And I said, oh, right. I'm going to you know, be an architect. And I said, what about you? And he said, I'm going to be a medical illustrator. I said, I've never heard of it. And he said, oh, it's like Leonardo da Vinci. You know, you draw uh, all of the artwork for textbooks, anatomy, physiology, biology. Hmm. And I thought to myself, wow, maybe instead of building buildings in 3D, I could build the human body in 3D and yeah. teach you know, students uh, in 3D rather than through a textbook. Right. So I went and talked to the dean uh, and said, hey, can I pick up a science degree and an art degree? Uh, and they said, yes. And then I did research uh, in diabetes for a year and then went to Johns Hopkins okay. Medical School and have a master's in medical illustration. Wow. <laughs> it's that all is... I've ever done. Like there's people, they have a degree in this or a degree in that what they actually do for a living is completely different. I've right. done nothing but the same thing since I was a little kid. Wow. That is really cool. And I, I imagine you still, you still paint and. Oh, and, sure. Uh, okay. Like my house is filled with my art. Uh, I still do watercolor. Uh, I like to renovate the house. Like I said, I'm a, I'm sort of, you would call me a closet architect. <laughs> and it, uh, my house is my architectural project. <laughs> Okay. And I'm, uh, my sons are always saying, Dad, didn't you just paint that wall? Like, what color are you going to paint it now? <laughs> and I'm like, hey, kid, you know, this is this is my little outlet. So, yeah, yeah, it's uh, I think once an artist, always an artist. Yeah. 
Fantastic. Well, I, I'm I'm a I, I'm more sketch. Uh, I uh, I don't look at myself as an artist because I I don't practice it regularly. But uh, but I, I I love to draw, and uh, I thought I'd move move that direction a little bit more as well. So I'm I'm a little a little jealous, but. Uh, I think it's great. You know, I kind of see a, a different season of life where I get back into to drawing a lot more. You know, I have, I have young kids. And so hopefully there will be more of a chapter like that. Oh, yeah. I mean, little kids love when you can draw for them. I mean, I entertain oh, oh, yeah. you know, my children constantly. Draw me a dinosaur. Uh, you know, draw yes. me a horse, you know, you know, or yes. I would draw them. Or here's how you draw an eye. Right. Um, you know, here's how you would draw a face. Uh, here's one point perspective. Here's two point perspective. And so, you know, they, they have the basis of that and both of them were pretty good artists, but again, it's, you know, you don't want your children to be you, you want them to be themselves. Good and point. both, you know, my oldest is moving into mechanical engineering and oh, okay. uh, my younger one will probably be into computer programming. Wow. Both very tough fields. I mean, yeah. mentally. They're, they're both mentally brighter than I am. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they let me know that all the time and, and, and they test me yeah so they came uh, one day they said um so dad you have a pretty high iq and i said yes and they well, said yes, let's, I do. they go let's prove it i go i don't have to prove it to you i said i do and let's just leave it at that and uh, <laughs> there is an online test called you know like free iq test.com or something oh. like that 20 questions and they stood behind me and you're being timed so the faster you answer the questions the higher your iq your sons yeah. were sitting there watching watching you take this test oh yeah and giving me grief for being slow they're brutal oh, yeah and i and luckily wow. i scored well but i <laughs> was still below both of them yeah wow yeah they're but, like I, but of course i'm sure it makes you feel I'm, 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 I'm sure you feel amazing to think that they are just so bright. It sounds well, like they're very driven, very competitive, like their dad, I'm sure. You, you know, you get what God gives you, yeah. you know, and I'm blessed that, you know, I have these two amazing sons. I can't say that, that it was anything other than gifts from God. Um, and that they, you know, they are the, the, the love of my life. And, uh, you know, I can't be, more happy with you know who they are as young men so that i mean that's really cool fantastic well wanted to ask uh and this is kind of moving into the the field that you've been in for many many years what what is something that people don't traditionally know about about your career um one is that there aren't that many people uh, there are probably only between 700 to 1,000 medical illustrators uh, in the world. Oh, really? And Yeah. And the other part of it is uh, that they don't really ever think of it as a profession. And even though you now are bombarded uh, with uh, pharmaceutical commercials that are always showing the brain or neurons and, and or lower back pain or uh, now in the NFL, you're starting to see you know, such and such had a rotator cuff injury, or here's a yeah. hamstring pull. And so those right. are all done by medical illustrators. Huh. Uh, it's not, uh, people think uh, medical illustration, you think of a textbook. But actually, in the United States, uh, we're involved in over 20 different markets. So whether it be libraries, museums, broadcast television, uh, college textbook publishing, patient education, patient wellness, electronic medical records, medical legal, uh, pharmaceutical websites, uh, consumer health websites, um, iPhone messaging, you know, Android uh, phone messaging. So it's, yeah, I mean, there's wow. lots of different applications oh that people never thought of. I mean, this industry alone uh, will do, or is projected to do, you know, maybe 110, $120 million this year. Wow. And within five years, uh, that's expected to grow to like 350 million. Oh my goodness! Uh, in a short period of time, right? Yeah, with all the apps and everything that are coming out, more and more and demand. The the coolest thing is uh, virtual reality and augmented reality. 
Right. Uh, when you look at, um, say, for example, uh, I don't know if you've ever tried uh, VR, uh -huh. but yep, I've got a VR. Okay, so you have the HTC Vive, and then you have the Oculus Rift, the top two. Uh -huh. Well, Facebook paid two billion dollars to uh, Oculus, but they're going to need content. And where are you going to yeah. get the content? Exactly. Well, if you're going to go into the healthcare space, one company to look at would be the company that owns the largest 3D medical animation library in the world, me. And so the ability for us to take our 1500 animations on Blossom.com and convert wow. those into VR is sort of the wave that we're moving the company. I received a phone call uh, from some people in Intel and Intel is very interested in this space. They wow. said, Bruce, uh, we would like to uh, fly you out here, talk to you. Uh -huh. And we want to fund the development of what's in your head and what you would do in the VR space. Really? And so Intel funded and paid for uh, our skeletal muscle contraction VR app, which has now wow. been demoed by uh, HP and Dell uh, in Berlin, in London, in Orlando, and all these other healthcare conferences. And it's regarded as probably uh, the best uh, VR application uh, for student education. Bruce, that's fantastic. Congratulations. That, Thanks. That is, that's remarkable. Congratulations. Yeah, the, the, you know, the ability to, to then add to this VR experience. So, for example, if you're a student or you're a patient and you're getting ready to go into a class or in, to uh, go to an appointment, okay. you get a, a notice on your phone and it says, hey, here's uh, your appointment is at 2 o'clock or your lecture is at 2 o'clock. And here are three animations that we want you to watch prior to your visit. So as a student, you're watching these animations and you're saying, wow, this is pretty interesting. Then when you get to the lecture, you see that animation full screen up in the lecture hall, or maybe you're online like we are. And the instructor just hits click and goes to Blossom.com and plays the animation for you. Right. Then you go and you're actually studying that chapter. And while you're studying the chapter, you can click our icon. We have a browser extension app, and this will okay. scan any text-based document and highlight 1,500 keywords. And then once highlighted, you can click it, and our animation will play. So really? we add rich media instantly to anybody's textbook or anybody's website. Wow. Then you say, okay, now that I'm done reading the chapter, it's time to go to the lab. You go into the lab, and what you once saw on your phone, you now are standing inside of it. You're looking at skeletal muscle contraction coming right at you. You're able to grab wow. these pieces and rotate them. You can walk around them, you know, and it's a completely different experience. And we've seen with students and with instructors, they say exactly what you're saying. They take that headset off, and they're like, wow, that is the future <laughs> of education. This is how all people are going to be taught. Um, we are talking to uh, some different uh, uh, people in the healthcare space, uh, specifically cardiology, where if you have atrial fibrillation, uh, you actually be able to stand with the doctor in front of the heart, walk around it, and he can show the electrical system. And then he's going to show how he's going to, you know, stop this transfer of these signals through ablation and then restore your normal heartbeat. And you'll be able to look and walk around and say, wow, I finally understand what's going on with me. And you're going to take better care of yourself. So we see this whole innovation occurring uh, over the next three to five years. So how do you keep up with, with well, all so of much these advancements? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's not so much keep up as it is like your constantly finding new ways to utilize all these models and all these animations and get them directly to somebody. So say, for example, I may have great topics on cancer. I may have like 20 or 30 or 50 topics on cancer. But if you okay. don't have cancer, you probably will never see them. You're never going to go to Blossom.com. You're never going to look up what is chemotherapy, what is radiation sickness, 
what's the difference between tomotherapy and CyberKnife? You have no interest because you don't have cancer. Right. But when you do, the best possible thing is to have one direct link to those animations. So if you're a physician and your physician, by the way, any healthcare provider hates YouTube, hates any sort of like internet, Google searching of healthcare information because they, they can't control it. Here, they can access our library uh, and say, boom, I want you to watch these Blossom animations. Now there's a foundation that is a legitimate foundation. It's medically and scientifically accurate and the patient understands it. And then the patient's not gonna go look for more. You know, I mean, they're not gonna keep looking for cancer. You know, but if, if I can somehow be one link away from what you need, that's the solution that we're all going to see. That's remarkable. I mean, there's just, uh, there, there's, uh, there's so much room to, to scale what you're doing. And oh, again, the vantage point that you're giving people. If you say, for example, we also have this content translated into 21 different languages. I was going to so ask imagine that. Okay. You're in Russia. You're reading Sports Illustrated online in Russian. Your favorite soccer player has an ACL tear. You can click the Blossom icon. It will scan Sports Illustrated, highlight ACL in Russian, play the animation in Russian, in Chinese, in Korean, in French, Italian, Arabic. And it's all there. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that is just really cool. It will... It, it, it really sort of facilitates and, and um, that you get this information quickly. And the, the vignettes, which is really pretty funny, I'll tell you the story. So my mother, in the late 90s, she says to me, Bruce, I've got to go in uh, for an angiogram. They think I might have, I, I might need angioplasty. Like, what is this? Right. So my mom is a typical mom. You know, she's a short Italian lady. Okay. And it, I look at the content that I have built for Merck and Pfizer and GSK and Pearson and McGraw-Hill, and I put together a two-minute vignette on what is an angiogram, what's angioplasty. I send it home to her. Two weeks later, she says, hey, what do you have on migraines? So again, I look at my library of what I have on nerve conduction and everything, and I build another little vignette and send it to her. Now, bear in mind, we get paid fifteen dollars to $20,000 to create one minute of animation. Wow. I mean, it's that expensive. So about two weeks after that, three weeks, she says, what do you have on glaucoma? I said, mom, are you okay? She said, oh, they're not for me. They're for my girlfriends uh, <laughs> in her retirement home. And I'm like, do you know how expensive <laughs> this is? Like, you're like, so I realized nobody is ever going to build high-end medical animations at twenty, thirty thousand dollars a pop to help educate right. patients and students. So I built fifty topics. That is now one thousand five hundred topics. We had one language. Now we have twenty-one languages. Sounds like you've pretty much answered. I mean, if if people were to approach you, you know, a group of people in a room, you could probably answer almost every single question. That's you know pretty much the typical question that anybody would ask about any medical condition. Yeah, you would have to say medical condition. <laughs> like if you ask me about politics, if you ask me about road construction, or if you ask me about <laughs> history or, or you know, war strategies, no, I'm, I'm a complete moron. But you know, if you ask me about medical uh, topics, uh, there's a likelihood that we would have a good answer and even an animation <laughs> to help explain right. what's going on with you. Yeah. Bruce, uh, Looking back when you first uh, started developing your organization, what is a time where you feel like you, you had kind of a failure moment or a time that was a real challenge or hiccup for you? There wasn't one failure moment. There were two. <laughs> there were total collapses. I mean, when you have a, I've been running my business for 26 years. So okay. as a CEO of a small company, yeah. You're going to have great years. Yeah. You're going to have average years. And then you're going to have years where you have to lay off people. You have to scale back. You have to, you know, reassess what you're doing. 
Yeah. And I remember my brother asking me, saying, hey, what's it like being a CEO of your company? And I said, if you're not comfortable being on your hands and knees, crying and begging God to lift you up, this yeah. is probably not you know, the job for you. Uh, all small business owners, all young CEOs go through it. You know, there are those moments where, how am I going to make payroll? How am I going to, you know, keep all these employees? How am I going to pay off the investors? How am I going to right. deal with, you know, the money owed to the IRS? How am I going to make rent? You know, and I've got my children, you know, and so, I mean, it's an awful lot of pressure and you just work your way through. And then you have years where it's great and you say, you know, thank you, God, for carrying me. And yeah. now I'm on this, you know, this path. But it's like life. You know, you, you it's not a straight path. You're going to have highs. You're going to have lows. And just when you're in those lows, you have to know that you're going to make it, you know. Yeah. Um, but the longer you're in business, the, the more likely uh, that you will fail. One of my favorite quotes is, uh, I love it on the mountaintop, but it's in the valley where I grow. Right. And I've always found that instructive for me because, you know, in life there are peaks and valleys. And and when we've acmed certain peaks and we get back down into the valley, we know the steps it took to get up to the peak. Uh, it's just identifying with those. And, and as you've mentioned, certainly relying on on God, you know, doing everything you can and and hoping and praying he'll make up the difference. Oh, he will. Um, that's a for sure. Yep. Uh, you uh, you will grow in, in that faith. You know, when I was 19, 20 years old, uh, someone said, you know, were you very religious? Did you pray a lot? And I'm like, no, I didn't pray at all. And they're right. like, what about now? I go, oh, I have children. <laughs> I got a business. I pray all the time. <laughs> I'm not, I, I don't stop. <laughs> right, right. That dependency elevated quite a bit with, <laughs> with those oh, yeah. responsibilities. Oh, when you have children, uh, you have a wife, you, you, you have yeah. all of these employees. Uh, I mean, it's, you, you become religious naturally. Right. Yep. Yep. And, and a lot of that's because of the structure and the patterns you're trying to instill in, in your children wanted to ask what what one habit would you say has contributed to the success that you've seen today in in our business or in general in your life what what do you feel like is one personal habit that has contributed to the success you've seen i think it's the uh, the ability to believe in yourself and to trust in your own gut instinct as to what is right um, and anybody who has a small company uh, or talks to a consultant, there's always a group of people that will tell you how to run your business um, sure. every day. Yeah. <laughs> and you, uh, you have to just believe that you have an idea and that you, you feel it and then you stay true to it and then you, and you make it happen. Um, and you, you, don't, you don't try to live out someone else's dream. You live your dream. Well, and like you said, with prayer and that dependency, boy, if you've had that, if you've been communicating things to God and you've taken something to him and, and you start moving forward and executing on, on what you feel is right, I mean, you've got that relationship and that support. And, you know, is it any wonder you're going to have things that are trying to deviate you, um, which, in, which in certain circumstances your, your path may change a, a little bit, but, but I love that. I, that my takeaway in yeah, that yeah. is that you yeah, have to believe in yourself and your plan and, and what, uh, what you're doing with, uh, you know, you, the inspiration you've been given. You have these people, you, you know them and they have problems and they have drama and you say, yes, what happened? Well, I was at this club, it was 2 AM. Uh, we were drinking and such and such happened. You know, if you're laying on your sofa and you're watching TV and you're doing some sit-ups, you're not going to run into a whole lot of trouble. You know, <laughs> right. if you're, you know, if you live a, 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 a normal, quiet life, that gives you the energy and the strength to focus on your business. You don't have other yeah. distractions. Removing negativity, removing drama, and 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 keeping a, a pure focus 
uh, enables you to really achieve greater levels of success. What do you hope your legacy to be when, you know, you, you kind of, uh, I don't know if one finishes out their career, but, but just, you know, at the end of your life, what do you, what do you want your legacy to be with the company that you have? Well, I will tell you that, you know, I'm very happy with what we've already achieved. Um, my goal is to educate 1 billion people worldwide. Wow. And, uh, right. So we educate probably, uh, tens, tens of millions a year now. Okay. Um, when you look at the website, I mean, like the Veterans Health Administration, uh, they alone had over 1 million of our videos watched last year. Wow. So when you look at all of our clients who have our animations on their websites, on their devices, uh -huh. uh, in their commercials, in their, in their areas, I mean, we're reaching a lot of eyeballs. But oh, yeah. when you say to anybody now, you say, oh, um, drawing the human body, like, who do you think of? Like, you don't say, if you say basketball player, you say, oh, LeBron James, Michael Jordan, you know? But when you say medical, you know, illustrator, medical animator, who, who, who comes to mind? You know, you have to go all the way back to Leonardo da Vinci, you know, Michelangelo, you know, where people say, oh, yeah, they drew the human body. They were the first people. Sure. I want our legacy to be, you know, much as Kleenex is tied to a white tissue and FedEx is tied to something overnight. I want Blossom to be synonymous with medical animation. Um, and, I, and I think that the amount of content that we have, the num we're viewed in every single country in the world right now. And each country, you know, continues to grow every day. So um, right now we're, we're huge in Romania. It's like David Hasselhoff was huge in Germany for some reason. <laughs> right. we're, we're, Blossom is huge in Romania. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> of all places. Well, you are worldwide, so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you had to get it, uh, you had to make sure you've you've had to make sure Romanian is is yeah, constantly I, updated. I, I, somebody, I guess, was blogging or tweeting who had a, a large fan base. And that tweet, that blog, really propelled Blossom and Blossom.com. Really? And we saw a spike. But when you think about it, I mean, we have uh, just about as many people in Romania as we do in the United States viewing Blossom.com. And Romania is, is wow. you know, a fraction of the population. So, yeah, wow. it's, it's, yeah, I think that, you know, we were getting large hits in uh, Korea for a long period of time and different topics are, are of interest in different places. Wow. Uh, but I think that it used to be you would go talk to your doctor. He would tell you something and then you would leave. And you would take the pills and that was it. Now everybody searches. Everybody wants to, to go onto the internet. They want to find out what is COPD? You know, what is diabetic neuropathy? You know, what right. is um, the lap band procedure? Um, and they want an animation. They don't want to read. So if you look at, for example, and I, and I mentioned this the other day, there is a video an animation. It's small. It's not good. Okay. It's on delivery. It's on YouTube. And it has been viewed not 500,000 times, not 5 million, 55 million times. One animation. Wow. So when you start thinking about the number of patients and consumers and students who are seeking high quality medical animation, we want them to go to Blossom.com. Because YouTube, you don't know if it's if it's medically and scientifically accurate. Right. Yep. Our content is. Our stuff is vetted and viewed every day by chief medical officers, professors, uh, anatomists. And what's, <laughs> what's really funny is we had a professor who is the head of anatomy and, physio and physiology uh, at the University of Hawaii. Okay. And he was looking at one of our animations on skeletal muscle and 
the word epimecium, um, our editor had mislabeled it. And so he calls and tells us, listen, now, now bear in mind, my website has been free to the world to view, right? He says, if you don't fix this, I'm not going to be able to show this in my classroom. And it's, it's going to be worthless to me. And we're like, oh, sorry, you know, <laughs> like, but it is mine and I do own it. And you're using it for free, by the way. Um, but we know that there are people like that yeah. who scrutinize the content. And when there are small errors or changes, they contact us and we review it and we make those changes because we really do want to give uh, all people the highest quality uh, access to to the best medical information they can get. You know, regardless of where you're born or what language you speak, you know, uh, I believe that all people can be elevated through education and and I want to be part of that process. Well, with the goals that you have, uh, the numbers that you want to reach in, in your legacy, uh, certainly quality is, is going to have to continue to, to be <laughs> at the forefront. What, what do you feel like is, is your number one priority right now in your business as you're scaling? Um, what we're finding is who can reach the most people? You know, that's that's where we're searching. So is it okay. with, you know, OEMs um, like Dell and like HP and, and Intel and these others? Um, or is it going to be with somebody like Facebook and Oculus uh, or, you know, uh, the people with, you know, HTC? You know, who is going to be looking for the content? Because inevitably, it's all going to be AR and VR. You know, you, it, it yeah. really is the best way to learn. And it's interactive and you can touch it. You can engage with it. Um, and it's for short spurts. Um, so we see like those niches where someone said to me, how much, what is the cheapest your animation can be? And I said, well, it can be one penny, you know, per animation. And that's if your website has 5 million views uh, of their electronic medical record. And if I get one penny per each one, that's six hundred thousand dollars a year, yeah. you know, in licensing fees. So if you start looking at well, how many computer systems are manufactured uh, every year, and if the Blossom content was already preloaded, so if you're a science student, you have six hundred thousand new science students in the United States every single year. So when you see the decline of publishing, you see all of these sort of uh, conversions of textbooks to online content. The idea to be able to, you know, quote, blossom it and add our rich media to that text in large numbers uh, is really where we see the volume. That, I mean, that's it's it's seeing patient education and student education become a priority in order to better educate students and then create more compliant patients. Okay. Okay. And you've, you've talked about the, the number of different ways people can utilize your, your illustrations. And would you mind just unpacking uh, kind of two or three, you know, if somebody was to go to Blossom.com, uh, you know, what type of uh, people are coming to your website? Are they, are they publishers? Are they universities? Would you mind unpacking this a little bit more? Sure. So the majority of the people that would come there, would be uh, anatomy and physiology instructors okay. and their students. And it, it's not surprising that, that our animations are sort of part of curriculums um, because they're really, really well done and they help in that process. Okay. The other people that come there are maybe uh, healthcare providers, uh, physicians and or um, patients who have been sent there say, oh, look, go to Blossom and look at diabetes or go there and look at chemotherapy, go there and look at such and such. You know, um, there's a great animation on ventricular tachycardia, you know, or he really explains cervical dysplasia uh, really, really well. So we see consumers coming there. We see patients and, and we see um, mostly um, 
just anybody who who who's frustrated with the rest of the internet when it comes to medicine and science, uh, you can come to Blossom and go, ah, oh, this is finally what I was looking for. You know, this is a great site. Well, I know I'll be checking it out. Uh, especially- oh, it's addictive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because what will happen, and this happens all the time, and this is where like you get like where it blows you away. So each animation is maybe two minutes, right? So you watch one, then you watch another, and another, and another, and another, and your brother has this, and your sister has this, and your mother has this. And so right. you maybe watch 10, and you've spent 30 minutes on the website. Then it hits you. There's another 1,490 for you still to view. Right. And, and, and you just go like this, yeah, that's, <laughs> this is crazy. Right. How much content is on this thing? If we, if you look at a replacement value, right? So taking the, the number of $15,000 per minute, say you have, they all average two minutes. So that's a topic is $30,000. Now you have 1500 topics. Wow. Okay. So now you're at $45 million. Then you look at each language is $150,000 to create. And you have 20 languages. That's another 3 million. So you have a website that's about $48 million wow. um, that we have built over 26 years um, that we allow people to view freely uh, in order to, you know, to become better educated on their own. Wow. Well, I, I don't know if you get told this enough, but, you know, uh, we are very grateful, very, very grateful for this type of education. And I'm excited to see how things progress with virtual reality. Oh, yeah. And uh, imagine myself in my life taking advantage of this website uh, at several stages of my life. So yeah. so thank you. Thank you very oh, yeah. much. You, it, everyone will get sick. Everyone will have a broken yeah. bone. Everybody will exactly. have problems with their eyesight. Everybody will have problems with their hearing. Right. It's just inevitable. You don't, you're not perfect your whole life, you know, in, in your behavior or in your physical state. You're always evolving and changing. And as you go through that, our website can help educate you if you're a student wanting to be a nurse or be a doctor uh, or a biologist or, or any of the sciences. But later on, you also want to help educate your parents, your grandparents. And, you, you know, you want to alleviate some fears and concerns. And our animations help do that. Um, and we think that that's a good thing. Yeah, absolutely. I was just thinking I'm, I'm getting ready for a half marathon and it's my first half marathon. I'm going to be doing it in about four weeks. And uh, this last week I reached out to people on Facebook and I said, Hey, I'm, I'm having, uh, I'm having some knee pains. I'm, I'm six one, I'm two thirty. I'm running an average of eight miles at least four times a week, but I'm start. I'm really having some 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 knee pain when I start off for about thirty minutes of my run, and so I started scouring the. You know, I asked the question on on Facebook, but then I started looking at videos and 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 uh, you know, really, I should have started at Blossom. Yeah, maybe, you maybe a medial available. meniscus tear, or maybe you've got uh, right. some level of early onset of osteoarthritis, or. Right. You know, you've got some patella ligament, you know, is running. So, yeah, we have a 3D model of, of the knee and you can spin and rotate it. And we have various uh, things related to it. So when you do pick a topic after that topic is over, we have related topics that you may want to look at. Oh, that's and the nice. cooler thing is, so we're going to we haven't even talked about it, but so we're going to put an avatar on our website and she will be like a medical concierge for you. So when you go to Blossom, okay. I mean, it's kind of like, it's a lot of stuff when you go there and she'll be able to direct you. So she'll say, oh, so how are you today? You know, how can I help you? What are you searching for? You know, and wow. Impressive. Uh, there may be the likelihood that we can tie that to IBM Watson. And so that the information that she's giving you uh, is also tied to a database of information. And so, uh, yeah, it's... Um, It'll be a much cooler way because she'll know your history, she'll know you, and she'll she'll know like oh last year you had knee pain, you know today you have shoulder problems, uh, you have ringing in your ear, you know uh, 
she she understands and has a history with you. So this is something that you're developing right now, Bruce. Right. Uh, we've partnered with a, a company called ID Avatars. Okay. And um, their avatar is called Sophie. We're thinking of putting uh, one of those on our website called Lisa. And, uh, and then she would be your go-to person uh, when you log on. Cool. Well, I'm, I'm excited to, to yeah. watch things progress. I, I have a couple of, uh, a couple more questions before we wrap things up, Bruce. Sure. Wondered, uh, just, you know, thinking about, about your sons, uh, just let's, let's kind of move forward in your life. Let's say, you know, you're at a point in your life where, you know, unfortunately you are on the, the decline and, uh, you have, Mentally you have three. I already am. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's, let's say you're, you're talking with your sons. Uh, what would you feel that three, three absolute truths that you, you'd want to pass on to your sons? Uh, what would they be at this point in your life? Uh, I would say first God exists. Yeah. Uh, is an absolute truth. Um, I believe that um, there is an afterlife. Uh, is an absolute truth. I believe in the, the conservation of energy uh, and that your your spirit um, will go into another dimension uh, and, and, and what that is and how it will occur, you know, no one knows, but I believe that that's an absolute truth. Uh, I feel the presence of, 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 of energy and people uh, all the time around me and um, I feel the Holy Spirit uh, so that's the second absolute truth. And I think the third absolute truth is you can always be better. You yeah. know, you can, you can always be kinder, nicer, just better. Yeah. Well, Bruce, those, those three things completely resonate with me. In fact, I was thinking about this question and the, you know, number one, I mean, number one, number two, and number three, I, I, th I think that's what mine would be quite frankly you yeah. know i so uh, thank everything you. else thank really you. doesn't matter you know yeah. be a nice person be a decent human being you know do good in the world you know um try to please god with your efforts yeah. and and your behavior you know yeah. have i always been a really good person hell no i mean horrible yeah. <laughs> but yeah. i try to be better absolutely and I, I, yeah yep well, thank you. And uh, last question I have for you is uh, actually second to last, qu last question. Uh, your, wh what is your your, defini your definition of, of entrepreneurship today and how has it changed when you from when you first started Blossom to, to today? Yeah. So when I started, there weren't that many systems that even existed that could create a 3D animation, let alone a medical animation. Uh, the systems were anywhere between 100 to $300,000 a piece. Oh my goodness. And the, the machines that you needed to, to use in conjunction with that were probably another 300 to $400,000. Wow. That all has come down. You know, uh, when we started, there was no such thing as FedEx. You know, there was, there was faxing. <laughs> um, and, and there was no internet. So you now add the internet, you now add broadband, you now have, uh, hospital systems and healthcare organizations and having a website, you know, then you go from websites to, uh, content management systems. Then you go to, uh, iPhones. I mean, the iPhone completely changed everything. Yeah. And then you go to iPads you know, and the tablets. And now you go into the app market. And now the app market is, is moved away to HTML5, which allows your website and everything to look great on the phones. That now is moving into AR and VR and avatars. So um, I would say that, you know, for, as an entrepreneur, like you need to constantly be aware of technology and changes because 80% of all, uh, it might even be higher now, uh, internet searches are all done on the phones, you know, yeah. and the phone, it used to be that wealthy people could access the internet, 
uh, on their uh, desktop systems at home. Um, but the poor uh, really didn't have any access to the internet in the early stages. And the phone sort of allows all people now uh, equal access to the internet and to in content and information. So I would say that what we once did in terms of uh, building and developing animations that were projected in theaters and, and things of that nature to website development and now uh, the smartphone you will be able to slide this into a headset and go into a vr environment <laughs> that's amazing so i mean it, yeah it, it's and, and and to thinking you know about how do you uh, have your good years and your bad years you know you make decisions and w if you're quick enough to adjust your company and to move accordingly in this direction or that direction, you know, you may uh, save yourself, but you can't always predict technology. And that we've seen a, an awful lot of companies and you still see them now. I mean, you look at uh, Pearson Publishing, uh, they're, they name. went from 50,000 employees. Uh, they probably have now 25,000. Uh, the last quarter, they lost $300 million. Wow. Um, so, you know, you're looking at this implosion of uh, those large textbook-based publishing companies. Um, a textbook, when I was a kid, uh, might have been $50. That same textbook today is almost $350. So, so you know, getting that content free online is making a huge difference. Yeah. Yep, completely changing their environment. Well, Bruce, thank you so much to those watching and, and listening. Thank you so much for for. I hope they in. enjoyed it. <laughs> I, I I've enjoyed it. I, I mean, how could you not? We're, yeah. we're we're talking to you, Bruce. I mean, how could yeah. you not enjoy this discussion? <laughs> well, we're gonna we're gonna close things up. This has uh, been an interview with with Bruce Blossom, uh, who really is redefining patient and student education worldwide. Uh, again, Bruce, uh, you said go to Blossom.com. Where else can people uh, learn more about you and connect with you? Oh, yeah, you can um, you can just Google me. I mean, I'm, what's really weird is that we have, Blossom is like what's considered a virgin name, um, meaning that there are only uh, less than 10 people in the entire world with the last name Blossom. Huh, and it's myself, my brother, uh, uh, my two sons, and then there's a, a scatter of a few other people. So if you put in, you know, B-L-A-U-S-E-N and you do Google search, uh, I'm the only one that really comes up. Hmm. So it's, yeah, there's, there's, there's an awful lot that you can read. <laughs> I'd be really bored. <laughs> <laughs> well, fantastic, Bruce. Uh, we're going to go ahead and end the show now. And uh, again, I want to thank you for, for your time. If you'll stay on for just a second afterward, uh, I'd like to chat for, with you for just a second. Sure. It'd be great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much.